Here I've got a nice calculus problem, which looks pretty complicated, but ends up being pretty simple. I think this problem would be nice for like a bonus question on a differential calculus exam. So let's see what we got. Our goal is to find the 2022nd derivative of this rational function, which I've called it f. So we've got f of x is 6x squared minus 4x minus 8 over x cubed minus 4x. And there are some really some hints built into the statement of this problem that we should maybe go over before we dive in. And the first is that this would be unreasonable unless there would be, unless there's a trick. In other words, if we were to just take the derivative of this over and over and over using the quotient rule, we would get something that is really unrecognizable and there would be no apparent pattern. So there's probably some trick to rewrite this function before we get started in the first place. Another thing built into this is that this number 2022 is probably not special. So it's best to find the nth derivative for an arbitrary n by induction. Okay, so keeping these two, in two things in mind, let's dive into our problem. Let's first notice that this is a rational function. The degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, so we can rewrite it using partial fraction decomposition. And here I can see that the denominator factors like x times x minus 2 times x plus 2, and that's going to drive our partial fraction decomposition. So let's just copy over the numerator. So we have 6x squared minus 4x plus 8, sorry, minus 8. And now we're going to split this up for each of these factors in the denominator. So this should split up as a over x minus two plus b over x plus c over x plus two, where a, b, and c are numbers. And I did it like this just because there's some nice symmetry in writing it this way. Okay, so now let's take this entire equation and multiply by this denominator so that we'll turn this from a rational equation to a polynomial equation. So let's see, multiplying this by x times x minus two times x plus two will give us the following equation. So we'll have six x squared minus four x minus eight equals a times x times x plus two that's because in the first term, the x minus 2 will cancel. Then we'll have b times x minus 2 times x plus 2. That's because in the second term, the x term will cancel. And finally, we have cx times x minus 2. Okay, now we're going to use like a nice trick to find a, b, and c very quickly. And we can do this because there are no repeated roots. And that is we'll set x equal to 2, 0, and negative 2 successively and see how this simplification occurs. So let's start with maybe x equals 2. So plugging x equals 2 into this equation, let's see what we get. So we'll have 6 times 4. 4, that's 24, minus 8, minus another 8. So that'll give us 24 minus 16, which is equal to 8. But let's see what happens on the right-hand side of the equation. So in these last two terms, they collapse to 0 because we end up with a 2 minus 2. But in this first term, let's see, we have a times 2 times 2 plus 2. So that ends up being 8 times a, which means a is equal to the number 1. So we've so far determined that this number a must be 1. And now let's go on to the next value of x, which will aid in our simplification, and that is x equals 0. Okay, so let's see what we get if we plug in x equals 0. So over here, we'll have negative 8. That's pretty clear. And then over here, this first term and this last term will cancel. And we'll have b times negative 2 times positive 2. That is minus 4b. So in other words, b is equal to 2. 
Okay, so now we've got A and B, and we just need to calculate C, and we'll do that by setting X equal to negative two. Okay, so let's see. X equal to negative two in here will give us 24 plus eight minus eight, kind of for a similar calculation to what we had down here, but that's clearly equal to 24. And then plugging negative two in here, we see that this first and the second term cancel, and we're left with C times negative two times negative four. So that's gonna be eight times C, which means C is equal to three. Okay, that's good. So we've got A is one, B is two, and C is three. So let's rewrite our function F of X using this decomposition. So we've just used the method of partial fraction decomposition to decompose our function f of x exhibited in this rational form as this sum of simpler rational functions. So we've got one over x minus two plus two over x plus three over x plus two. Recall our goal is to find the 2022nd derivative via finding the arbitrary nth derivative and now I think we can probably start taking derivatives, see if we see a pattern, and then use that pattern to maybe come up with a conjecture and prove it via induction. Maybe a better way to write this would be via negative exponent so we can use the power rule. So let's notice that this is equal to x minus two to the negative one plus two times x to the negative one plus three times x plus two to the negative one. That allows us to very easily take this derivative. So the exponent comes down, we lower the exponent by one, and then since each of these are linear functions inside of our power with a coefficient of one in front of the x, we don't have to worry so much about the chain rule here. So here we have negative one times x minus two to the negative two minus two times x to the negative two minus three times x plus two to the minus two. Okay, let's maybe go one step further. So if we take the second derivative, this negative two will come down, the minus signs will cancel, we'll have two x minus two to the minus three. And then this will come down and I'm just gonna write that as two times two instead of simplifying it just so that we can maybe more readily see a pattern. That'll be plus two times two times x to the minus three. And then finally plus two times three times x plus two to the minus three. Well, let's notice that we've got this common factor of two out front here. We have a common factor of minus one out front here. So it looks like we can factor that kind of thing out. In fact, if you look at this hard enough, I think we can just see the pattern immediately. So it looks like the nth derivative will be something like this. So n factorial is a pretty good guess. And that's obviously from looking ahead. So notice if we were to take another derivative, we would have three times two. The next one would be four times three times two times one and so on and so forth. But our signs are also alternating. Our first derivative gave us a minus sign. Our second derivative gave us a plus sign. Notice our third derivative will give us a minus sign. So it stands to reason that the nth derivative will give us a minus sign if n is odd and a plus sign if n is even. We can encode that with this minus one to the n. Okay, and that's everything that we can factor out of this. And then we'll be left with x minus 2 to the minus n plus 1, where that's in parentheses, plus 2 times x to the minus n plus 1, plus 3 times x plus 2 to the minus n plus 1. So that's what it looks like is the case. We could rewrite these as rational functions too, which we will do as we move it to the top of the next board as a proposition to prove. Up to this point, we've gathered enough evidence to make the following claim as to the nth derivative of our function, which we can obviously use to find the 2022nd derivative pretty quickly. And that is the nth derivative is minus one to the n times n factorial, then we have one over x minus two to the n plus one, plus two over x to the n plus one, plus three over x plus two to the n plus one. 
And now let's prove this carefully using induction. Let's notice that our base case, which could really be taken as the n equals zero or the n equals one case, the n equals zero case is the zeroth derivative or the original function. That's done because of our calculation on the last board. So we're actually okay with that. So now let's make an induction hypothesis. So that means we're going to suppose for some arbitrary k, which is bigger than or equal to zero, we have the following fact. So the kth derivative of x is minus 1 to the k times k factorial times 1 over x minus 2 to the k plus 1 plus 2 over x to the k plus 1 and then finally plus 3 over x plus 2 to the k plus 1. And now we want to calculate the k plus first derivative and we'll use this expansion of the kth derivative to calculate the k plus first derivative. So now let's say now the k plus first derivative will be equal to minus 1 to the k times k factorial times the derivative of this object right here. So let's see, we've got to take the derivative of this. And we can do that just using the power rule given the fact that this is really minus k plus 1 or minus the quantity k plus 1. So let's see, that's going to give us a minus k plus 1 over x plus 1 to the k plus 2. That will be the derivative of this guy, given the fact that that's in the denominator. And then here we'll have plus t minus 2 times k plus 1 over x to the k plus 2. And then plus minus 3 times k plus 1 over x plus 2 to the k plus 2. Great. But now what can we do? Well, we can take this minus sign that's on each of these terms, factor it out, and change this k to a k plus 1. So let's do that by changing all of those to pluses. Okay, so that's good. And then one more thing that we can do is use the fact that k plus 1 factorial is equal to k plus 1 times k factorial, just by the definition of the factorial, to take each of these k plus 1s and factor them out and exchange this k factorial for a k plus 1 factorial. And then when all is said and done, we've rewritten our k plus first derivative, which we got by taking the derivative of our induction hypothesis in the correct form to finish off the proof of this claim. So we've got our arbitrary nth derivative, and now we're pretty much home free to plug in n equals 2022 to finish this problem off. And that's a good place to stop.